Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into my talk. My name is Hassan, I'm from Fuchs Lab, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. We're based in Manhattan, New York City. But I want to talk about using deep learning to model cancer prognosis and some of the challenges that come with it, and how our latest publication overcomes some of those challenges. In our previous work, we used deep unsupervised clustering to be able to find morphologies that may correlate to survival. Our autoencoder-based model used a clustering function to learn reoccurring patterns that exist across the data set and see if any of them correlate to survival. This is kind of a naive way of discovering subtypes and survival modeling. The data set that we use then is the same data set that we use now. Intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma is a rare cancer. It has an incidence rate of 1 in 140,000 in the U.S. It also has very low survival outcome. Our data set, which is built from three institutions, most of it coming from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, is one of the largest histopathology data sets of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, barely even touching 300 slides. Because the data set is so small, we want to do the best we can to reduce noise. For this reason, a pathologist manually annotated regions of tumor. In the experiments I'm going to talk about, we only extract tissue from these regions. So to go over it really quickly, our previous model was able to group together various histologies, and then we built a multivariate survival model using the traditional cost proportional hazard model. Again, this is a naive way of doing it, but we found that five of these clusters happen to correlate directly to survival. Now, of course, every time you run this model, the model will always produce a different order of um, histologies or quote-unquote subtypes. And sometimes they may not even reproduce the same subtypes. And this is a weakness that we wanted to overcome with the study that was published and accepted at middle, called Epic Survival. Rather than doing unsupervised clustering, we wanted to supervise the clusters directly with prognostic data. Previous work has already merged the Cox proportional hazard model with deep learning techniques. Very simply, the basic covariates, X, would have weights learned, beta, in the traditional Cox proportional hazard model. However, we can replace beta with theta, as parameters from a deep learning model. However, it's not that simple. There is still another problem to be dealt with, the problem of decoupling. Because a single digitized whole site image can spend billions of pixels, it is impossible to directly use whole site images in full to train survival models, at least given current technological constraints. It is a common technique to sample tiles from whole site images, often in creative ways, and then aggregating them to represent their respective whole site images in the final step of training. Our work overcomes this barrier by removing this two-stage approach and replacing it with an end-to-end -end model. Our survival model not only predicts a single risk for an entire whole site image at once, but at the same time, all the morphologies are clustered, meaning that the clusters that are produced are directly correlated to the prognostic data. So here's a visualization of our pipeline, but I'm not gonna go into it in detail. You can refer to the method specifics in our paper. For the sake of time, we can boil down the model to this. Using global centroids, which are trained across the entire data set, each slide has its tiles clustered into local clusters. Now for each local cluster, one tile which is assumed to be the most representative of the cluster, we choose the tile that's closest to the centroid, is used as the part which represents the entire slide. So then the slide gets boiled down to n tiles, which relate to n clusters. The embeddings of these n tiles become the entire part representation. This way we can model the entire slide as a whole as one part representation without breaking it up into a two-stage approach. A combined loss, which includes the Cox regression, and clustering used as regularization gets backpropagated throughout the entire model. Now I should add, in our approach, we added an extra loss function called stratification boosting. Basically within each batch, every tile is given a predicted risk score. The risk scores are ordered and divided into high and low based on a median threshold. And then the model is trained to push these two groups apart. The point here is to not only model the ordering based on time durations, but also to encourage the model to create subtypes within this ordering. We show results with and without stratification boosting and for a five-fold cross-validation as well as an external data set. We found that adding stratification boosting increased the performance of the model, especially on the test set. We also visualize a correlation between the predicted risk scores and the associated survival times. As you can see, as this normalized risk score increases, the survival time also increases. This shows that the model can not only order patients, but to some extent, it can also predict survival times. Thanks for listening. I'm looking forward to the discussion.